Around noon on December 7, 1978, a group of employees of the National Archive and Records Service were having lunch outside a federal storage facility in Suitland, Maryland, when they heard a distinct thump come from inside the facility. The manager went inside to check out the noise, only to come running out, shouting, Fire! Inside the facility were thousands of reels and millions of feet of irreplaceable newsreel footage covering the period 1929 to 1967. 911 was called and the fire department was there within seven minutes, yet despite their heroic efforts, after about four hours of fighting the fire, it was clear that the damage had been done. The fire at the Federal Center in Suitland, Maryland is history that deserves to be remembered. The Suitland, Maryland Federal Center film vaults were a complex of three buildings built in 1945 with the intended purpose of storing nitrate film. Nitrate film was the first flexible and commercialized film base and was first sold by Eastman Kodak in 1889. Unfortunately, nitrate film had a reputation for being extremely flammable, even setting projectors aflame while being screened. The first such incident was recorded as early as 1896. An early form of plastic, once nitrate ignites, it produces its own oxygen, which is what makes it so flammable. Nitrate films also degrade quickly, after only a few decades, and as they degrade they release a gas that is no less flammable than the film. There have been numerous nitrate fires in film vaults throughout the world. Motion Picture Studios, including RKO, Universal, and Warner Brothers, have had devastating vault fires. Cultural institutions charged with the pres preservation of film have also had large nitrate fires, including Cinématique Française, National Film Board of Canada, George Eastman House, and the Museum of Modern Art. To combat this problem, the Suitland buildings were equipped with numerous vaults that were contained and separated to prevent the spread of fires. The system had worked as recently as 1977, when a fire in Vault C had destroyed some 800,000 feet of historical nitrate film. But because of the vault system, the fire was contained in just one vault, and millions of feet of other film was protected. When Universal donated 28 million feet of newsreel in the early 1970s, it was clear to all parties that the vaults, which had been meant to be temporary but had been storing nitrate film for 25 years, were in desperate need of updates to properly protect the fragile films. Universal helped to pay for updates, including a rapid-release fire suppression system and improved vault doors, which were completed in 1973. The 1977 fire in Building C inspired the government to do more to protect the nitrate films still in the vaults. They increased physical inspections of collection to dispose of films that had become dangerous through decay and increased their monitoring of humidity within the vaults themselves. If the humidity was too high, it could cause the films to auto-ignite. Additionally, the General Service Administration was installing new air conditioning systems and adding insulation to the buildings with an eye towards long-term care. During this time, the National Archives and Records Service, or NARS, was doing everything it could to transfer the newsreel and outtakes to considerably safer acetate film. By the time of the fire, most of the newsreels had been converted, and the employees were looking through the outtakes to determine how much of it was worth transferring. This is part of the work that the employees who first witnessed the smoke were taking a break from when they heard the first explosion on December 7, 1978. The employees stayed nearby, but were helpless to do anything but watch as two more explosions rocked the complex. I've never seen anything like it in my life, said Prince George County Police Officer Joseph Froelich. I saw smoke coming out of the building and called my dispatcher with a fire report. Then there was a boom. The firemen got here a minute later and started to go in. Then there was another boom and they went flying back against the fence. It was incredible. The firefighters rushed into the complex with masks on to combat the toxic fumes spraying out of the vaults. Under the impression that workers were trapped inside, they opened up closed vaults and called out while other firefighters smashed windows to get at the blaze. Ultimately, the fire and fumes were too much and once it was determined that no one was left inside, the firefighters retreated. As they left the building, a backdraft explosion knocked down a wall and injured two of the firefighters. One of the difficulties with nitrate film is that it burns very hot and is difficult to put out. It will even continue burning if submerged completely. The entire area was blanketed with the caustic smell of burning film and authorities were worried about the potential health effects of smoke that included toxic sulfur dioxide and hydrogen cyanide. If it was inside a closed space, it would have been deadly, but even in the open air, it was dangerous. So authorities, wearing masks to protect themselves from the smoke, went to the residences and businesses downwind trying to evacuate the people. I thought it was some sort of SWAT team coming to a, get a guy with a gun, said one resident, but then I opened the door and there was all the smell and I couldn't breathe. Other people simply fled at the sight of the smoke and the sound of the explosions. In all, some hundred people were evacuated until the smoke could clear. 
The Washington Post described the firefighters clustering upwind of the building, sending water through the burnt out walls. The building spouted flames 20 to 30 feet high, took more than an hour to contain. By that time, most of the newsreel had already been destroyed, and at least 18 of the 27 vaults had been breached, and some 18,000 canisters of film burned. Before the advent of televised network news programs and the internet, newsreels were one of the main sources people had for news. Universal Studios produced and released newsreels twice a week from 1929 until 1967. The newsreels were shown in movie theaters, and each usually contained five to seven stories averaging two minutes long. In 1974, Universal Newsreel deeded its edited newsreel and outtake collection to the United States through the National Archives. The irony was that the films were donated specifically because it was believed that the National Archives was the best place to preserve them. Jack A. Rush, Universal's film librarian, said, They were going to preserve them all so they would be safe. Over 12 million feet of film went up in flames. The main body of the reels destroyed were from volumes 14 to 17, which covered the years from 1941 to 1945. The reels were said to include film of the bombing of Pearl Harbor, other World War II battlefield footage, and scenes from the Depression, as well as highlights of all sporting events, World Series, Babe Ruth's home runs, the Notre Dame football team under Newt Rockney, fashions, or whatever else had been top news in the world. James Moore, the director of audiovisual for NARS, said that there's no way to put an estimate on the film loss because its value was historical. Much of it was outtakes of newsreels made during World War II and had never been seen by the public. While there were copies of the newsreels themselves, Universal had no prints of these outtakes, making them an irretrievable loss. Rush commented, This film is naturally the history of your country. I am really at a loss for words in this. Fourteen firemen, three civilians, and one police officer were reported injured in the fire or treated for smoke inhalation, but none of them seriously. The inevitable question came next. How did the fire start? The General Service Administration conducted an investigation into the fire, and the House of Representatives held a hearing on the investigation and safety of other nitrate storage facilities. The General Service Administration came to the conclusion that what was likely happened was that workers installing the air conditioning system started an accidental fire with a spark from one of their power tools, and that it likely started in discarded cardboard or debris, as nitrate film fires develop rapidly in seconds, but the fire did not involve nitrate film until 15 to 20 minutes after work stopped. The fire department disagreed with this explanation. Instead, they suggested that failures in the air conditioning system actually caused the vault to heat up instead of cool down and this caused the nitrate film to auto-ignite, as it had in the previous fire. The air conditioning system had been leaking Freon for months prior to the fire, and the employees were waiting for the issue to be addressed at the time of the fire. The GSA report included the accusation that NARS had ignored the auto-ignition theory because dwelling on such matters would only make the agency look bad. The GSA investigation argued that not only had they done the requisite investigation, but that spontaneous combustion would actually help relieve the agency of blame, and that experts simply thought that the possibility was extremely unlikely. Whatever the cause of the fire, the investigation and subsequent hearing came up with a number of recommendations to protect the remaining nitrate films at Suitland and elsewhere under the government's stewardship. What was common between the two investigations was a series of mistakes that led to the severity of the disaster. When fire broke out in the Suitland Nitrate Vaults, the National Archives was in violation of several of the principles that the National Archives themselves had helped to establish over years of research. The sprinklers were turned off because workmen were upgrading them, and the workers were using power tools and perhaps even a blowtorch in the vicinity of highly combustible materials. With none of the designs in place that were intended to prevent the spread of fire, the conflagration moved quickly and the vaults exploded. The firefighters, in an effort to rescue trapped employees, opened many of the vaults, which would have been otherwise protected. General mismanagement with the construction workers, contracts, and GSA oversight were also investigated. Ironically, the Government Information and Individual Rights Subcommittee had sent a letter the morning of the fire to address the issue of nitrate storage, citing disturbing reports about the adequacy of the physical storage and preservation of documents and audiovisual materials. Nitrate films remained at the site, and NARS continued to secure and transfer what did survive. Andrew Smith, a former analyst with the National Archive and Records Administration, the service was renamed when it became an independent agency in 1985, said in a blog post in 2018 that despite the tragedy, the good faith effort by NARS to protect the films is the only reason any of the films survive today, and that what has survived has become one of the most heavily used collections in the National Archives. Many older films from the silent era were simply destroyed, deliberately, as they were seen as having no commercial value. The donation by Universal and the effort put into saving and restoring those films 
was an admirable effort at preserving what has been left to us by the past. The vaults were all demolished in the 2000s and all the remaining newsreel footage has been transferred to safer film. Despite its drawbacks, nitrate film still sees some use today and might not be as fragile as one's thought. Paul Sfer, who is an assistant division director with the Library of Congress, noted that everybody assumed that all the nitrate film would be gone by the year 2000, but caches of nitrate film are still being discovered today. And in fact, some aficionados swear by the medium, which they claim is bright and detailed in a way that other media simply isn't. Still, the Library of Congress estimates that about 75% of the around 11,000 American silent feature films made from 1912 to 1929 are now lost. This means that if for every film that we still have today, there are about six more silent films that are gone forever. The 1978 Suitland fire helped to change and update the way that nitrate film was protected. But it brings to light one of the sad and enduring facts of human history and the efforts of humanity to preserve that history. That our connection to history is sometimes tenuous. And that in a flash, sometimes quite literally in a flash, pieces of that history can be lost forever. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The History Guy, short snippets of forgotten history between 10 and 15 minutes long. And if you did enjoy, please go ahead and click that thumbs up button. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future episodes, please write those in the comment section and I will be happy to personally respond. Be sure to follow The History Guy on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and check out our merchandise on teespring.com. And if you'd like more episodes on Forgotten History, all you need to do is subscribe. <laughs>